everybody, it's me, your home bartender, and I'm back with another video for bartenderatlas.com. Bartender Atlas is a great site that features profiles of bartenders that include some fun trivia about them, their favorite drinks, stories from behind the bar, and you can search them by city, so if you're traveling, you can find a bar you, you want to go to, find the name of the bartender, feel like you already know somebody there. I'm really thankful to them for letting me do these videos. It's a lot of fun for me, I hope you're enjoying them too. This week we're going to talk about something that seems pretty basic but that I think is really underrated in how it's thought about and, and treated in, in cocktails, especially for people at home, and that's ice. So let's get into it. understand why I think ice is an underrated component of cocktails, I want to start with a story. A few years ago, I had the great pleasure and privilege to travel to Tokyo and go to Bar High Five, which is in the Ginza district of Tokyo. It was definitely one of the best experiences I've ever had in a bar, so much so that I went back the next night because uh, I just couldn't, couldn't pass up an opportunity to go there twice in two days. At this bar, as with many bars in Japan and now around the world, they get delivered large blocks of this perfectly clear ice. And there are these massive blocks and every day they carve ice spheres and crystals. But two things about ice that really stood out to me when I was there. The first is a really cold ice. And that's used to bring down the temperature of the spirits that it keeps on the back bar. So things like whiskeys, rums. The second is a warmer ice. And this is used to actually bring up the temperature of spirits that he keeps in the freezer. So it's not quite so cold and, and more of that flavor comes out. And the other was that when you're normally when you're making a drink, the thing you add to the mixing glass last is ice. You want to add your ingredients, then put your ice in when you're ready to stir or shake so that the ingredients aren't just sitting there uh, and the ice isn't melting until you're ready to control that dilution. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. What he actually did was he put ice in his mixing glass first and then just put the mixing glass aside. Then he mixed his ingredients in a separate small mixing glass where he poured in all the ingredients at the right proportions, did a little bit of a taste before mixing them. And while he was doing that, the ice in the glass had a chance to melt a little bit and, it, and kind of contour itself to the insides of that mixing glass. He'd then pour off the water that had accumulated and pour in the spirit, the mixed spirits, the, the cocktail, into the mixing glass with the ice. And because it had had that chance to melt a little bit and form to the contours of the inside of the glass, when he was stirring, that stir was actually much more quiet than it would be and much more smooth. And this has to do with the ritualized nature of bartending and the way that it's approached in places like Japan and places around the world as a result of uh, witnessing that and following that tradition. And I'm not saying anyone has to follow those things or have take that much care about their ice, especially if you're doing it at home. It does illustrate very well that ice is an important component. Ice, I would say, actually does three things. Yes, it changes the temperature of your drink, it makes it colder. Two, it adds dilution, which I'll talk about more in a, in a bit. And three, it can actually add to the aeration of a drink. Not so much when you're stirring a drink, but when you're shaking a drink, having those solids, those solid pieces in there adds to the aeration, adds to the texture of the drink. And I'll get into that more, I think next time I wanna do a little bit more about technique, stirring versus shaking. And I think I think the first is, is the most obvious. You add ice to a drink and it brings down the temperature of that drink. Uh, but the second I think is, is less appreciated uh, if when you're just starting out making drinks. And that's the dilution. Uh, I wanna read you something actually from this book which is called The Drunken Botanist which is one of my favorite cocktail books, and it, get, it gets into the, the herbs and plants that are used to make different spirits and that you can then use to make cocktails and talks about how to grow them if you want to make them at home. There's a really good review of it on bartenderatlas.com, and I'll link that in, in the description below. Definitely check it out and definitely check out this book. But this is what it says. 
The best way to drink whiskey, and any other high proof spirit for that matter, is with a little splash of water. Scotch connoisseurs recommend adding 5 or 6 drops per ounce. It doesn't dilute the flavor, it actually heightens it. To understand why, consider the fact that the molecules with the most flavor, large fatty acid molecules that come through near the end of the distillation, tend to break away from the alcohol in the presence of water and form a suspension. So a splash of water will cause some whiskey to become cloudy, and those clumps of molecules in suspension bring the richest flavors forward. Dribbling ice water into absinthe causes cloudiness for much the same reason. So that gets into uh, why that bit of water can actually be beneficial. Rather than diluting flavor, it actually heightens flavor. And I think this goes a lot to why the perfect balance of a cocktail isn't just about the ingredients, but it's also about how you combine them, how you stir them or shake them, and what, what the ice and what the water does to the drink as a result. Ice plays a very, very important role that way because it does uh, add to the balance of that drink and it does bring out flavors that otherwise uh, may have been um, a little more, more muddy and, and not so bright. I've shown these before, but I really like these Tovalo ice cube trays. Uh, this is the, I think this is called the King Cube tray. It's the big one that makes these really nice, big um, square cubes of ice. You'll see my ice cubes are not perfectly clear like the ones uh, that Bar High Five got. But uh, I do want to try making some clear ice at home and maybe I'll save that for a future episode as well. But that big ice uh, is, is great for a few things. One, you can just put it in a drink by itself. If you're making something like an old fashioned, uh, something that's served over ice, but you just want that one big cube uh, that it'll melt a little more slowly because it has less surface area compared to the amount of ice that's in there. The other kind of Tovalo tray is the smaller one and it also makes square cubes. Square cubes? You know what I mean. Um, but they're a little smaller, but they're also really nice. And they're, what's really nice about them is, again, how nice and dense they are. They're, um, they're really nice. Uh, I used to use these all the time at home. I used to always keep ice made in these trays. And uh, if I was making it, let's say, for a party or I needed to have more ahead of time, I'd make it in batches, and as the ice uh, as the ice cubes are ready, I'd put them into Ziploc freezer bags, and that's a really good way to keep ice in the fridge. First of all, you're not taking up, uh, you're not using up your trays. You can reuse the trays, and it won't let any any smells or anything like that get to the ice. But ever since we moved to this house, we have a, we have a fridge that has an ice maker built into the freezer, and you know what? I just use that. Um, these are these just these little cubes. Uh, that aren't, you know, they're not cube shaped, they're sort of this like little, you know, a moon shape. And they're fine too. You know, I, I've said this before, but the ice you have at home is probably better than the ice of your standard uh, bar or pub, unless it really uh, cares about what it's doing in terms of cocktails and things like that. Your ice is colder, it's not going to melt as quickly. I use a lot of it and it, I think it holds the cold really well when I'm mixing a drink um, and I'll use these other dice cubes if I have people coming over, if I want to have a nice presentation. The other thing you can do with the big cubes is you can break them up to use as nice, you know, kind of uneven ice chunks if you want to put that in a drink. Yeah, all you have to do is you can just take it, hold it like that and then just take your uh, mixing spoon and give it a whack and it'll break, it'll break into these nice nice pieces. In terms of ice, there aren't a lot of tools that you need. Um, you can get ice pick if you have big chunks of ice. I don't have one myself, so I don't have one to show you. Um, but the one thing I do have is this, um, this bag. It's called the uh, Lewis bag. And it's just this, um, you know, kind of cloth canvas kind of bag. And if you want to crush ice, you can fill that with your ice cubes and then you can take a rolling pin, a frying pan, you know, anything kind of heavy. I use my wooden, big wooden muddler and you can just whack away at it and make some crushed ice if you're making that kind of drink. You know, I do that mostly for things like juleps, uh, but you know, that's, that's a nice thing to have this kind of bag, but really you could put it in a couple of Ziploc bags. If you are doing it in that, I would double up on the bag because the sharp edges of the ice can cut through the bag a bit. So it's better to put it in a, in a couple and to use the heavier duty freezer bags, but that works totally great. And I think the last thing I'll say about ice is it is something that's going to go in your drink. Some of that water is going to melt off. It is going to end up in your drink. And so, so think about it that way. Make it with filtered water or, you know, if you have good water out of your tap, that's fine. But, you know, it's, I just think it's something that's worth thinking about. You know, if you are, if you're watching these videos 
and you care about your spirits and you care about your other ingredients and your tools and everything else, yeah, ice is just as important component of cocktails and one that, like I said, is, is a little overlooked. So make sure you're adding it last to your cocktails, especially if you're making, let's say, you know, a couple of cocktails for people who are over. You don't want the that alcohol, those ingredients to start melting the ice before you have a chance to stir it or shake it and start to taste it and get to that level of dilution that you're that you're looking for. You know, think about if you're using a more a higher proof spirit, uh, like a cask strength whiskey or something like that that you'll need to add more of that dilution to get to the right level. You know, it's gonna play with your other ingredients differently. So you may have to add a little bit of something or decrease a bit of something else and and stir longer, shake longer than you, than you do with that same drink with a lower proof spirit. By changing one component, it really can change everything else. Just give it the same care and thought that you give everything else to your drinks and it, and it makes for another uh, nice story when you're telling your guests about the drink that you're making them and the way you're stirring it and the way you're preparing it. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate uh, all of you for tuning in and uh, until next time, I've been your home bartender and cheers.